What's going on everyone? Bryce Tui with Small Cap Recap. Happy Wednesday. Hope y'all are doing phenomenal, baby. Um, listen, here real quick, we're going to do a quick recap of the day. Good momentum today, unfortunately. Did not be, uh, was not able to trade much today. I was, by the time I got back, I was at the bank so long. <laughs> I hate the bank. I hate it. Oh, I, I, oh, and the camera shut off. My camera died. My battery is going to crap. So we're just going right into the charts. No waste in time today. Although what I am going to do though, I'm going to tell you, if you, if you haven't, um, you know, hold on. This right here. is the like button. It's my trying to do a thumb. That that just looks like a robot or something. Like a it kind of looks like a bird if you really look close. And no, oh, it's gone. Kind of looks like a bird or something or like a box with a beak. Um, hit the like button. Make sure you comment down below uh, anything actually. Just say hi. You know, just be like, "Hey Bryce, how are you doing today?" Because I don't think anyone really commented, Bryce, you're a sexy guy like I had uh, asked for. But hey, you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. Um, anyways, good action today. Uh, let's go over a couple of today's movers. BWV, uh, pretty pretty mean runner today, up over 100% earlier today. Gapping up from $2, hitting a high of 4 bucks. Got a nice little afternoon push there, but for the most part, it was just a gap in crap. Um, it's holding this level here. We'll see if anything comes out of it. Could be a nice day two move tomorrow. If we can maybe, what I would love to see on BWV would be a break under three out of the gates, a slight break under three, maybe down to 280, reclaim back up to like 320 and then break out of this, what will turn into a multi-day trend here. Um, break through that after a quick dump under support, try to trap some shorts or something. I think that could be kind of fun. Um, we also had PGY today. Continue its run. Um, it's let, let me turn on extended hours here. There we go. Um, had a pretty, you know, just faded it close. We had that nice gap up right into this resistance. And what do you know? We break through pre market. A lot of wicks. This would have been a really tough one to trade today. Um, but, you know, we had a lot of folks likely trapped under this low a day break after it halted, low a day break, chop up, and then we squeeze and then re dump and then. Rebounce and then it's like, okay, what are we doing here, buddy? You know, I don't know. I do not know what we're doing here on PGY. Uh, someone on Twitter brought up a pretty good point today. I just saw it. I don't even think I follow them, but it was a good point, though. It feels like a lot of action lately has just been ping pong between long and shorts. Trap the long, trap the shorts, trap the longs, trap the shorts. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, there have been good movers, like they've just been a little hard um, because of those traps. And I think PGY today was a good example of both of those. Whereas, I mean, the past few days have been just great trapping shorts. It's been a dream for longs. I wish I'd taken better advantage of it. Um, HKD, a beautiful, beautiful breakout. We talked about this one on Monday. Um, and we had this really nice consolidation period here right above view op the entire day. In fact, I actually didn't even see this in... Relatively low volume given its float size. It was one of those IPOs. We went. I went over this whole thing already. And AMTD. I wonder how AMTD is doing. I uh, didn't even look at that one today. Let's take a look. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. Kind of surprised. Um, but no, no. P uh, HKD though was a really gorgeous mover, and likely what you just had here was a lot of shorts trap. Like I, I went over the entire thing Monday where. Oh my God, that's beautiful. That could very, very realistically continue tomorrow. Um, definitely something to keep an eye on here, but I think you just have a lot of shorts trapped in this. And I say a lot, you know, relatively. That's a relative thing because trap some shorts on this day for that fake dump, re-rip it, probably squeeze out most, re-trap some shorts on this day and re-squeeze them out, which is why I wouldn't be surprised to see more continuation tomorrow on this. Uh, Lfly, we had a really nice, in fact, I actually just did an entire webinar. This will be, this, uh, um, uh, this small cap recap is right before it close. It's three o'clock, uh, central just about. So I did a pre-recorded webinar on Lfly and how this move likely happened and, you know, basically how to take advantage of it. One of my favorite midday patterns ever. Uh, and same thing here, it's just at the bank. 
Brutal. Miserable. That's okay. Um, it was a great lesson. Something great to watch. Glad to see that this type of move is back. This structure is back. So uh, this was a really gnarly mover though, gapping up. So we had a gap up from 480 to 5. And then went from 5 to over 10. So at one point up over 100% today. Midday pop and drop. I made a lot of money like this on these type of stocks last summer actually. Uh, this is a very popular pattern. So I'm glad to see that it's back. I won't lie to you. EVTL, I want to go over this daily chart. What we're looking like here is a fake breakout, uh, a failed breakout attempt, failed follow through. Wouldn't be surprised over the next few days to see a grind down, just a walk down, a steady walk down. And uh, could even be a dump, but this one wouldn't surprise me if it's more of a walk down than it is a full out dumpage. Um, but EVTL, I was really hoping for more out of it. But the fact of the matter is there's just too much resistance up here from this day. And really, I mean, even these past days here, you just have so much resistance. I mean, let's take a look here. You know, seven, between seven, you've got here, here, here. And now let's just go back over. Yeah, I mean, what do you know? Look at the range, it's between. It just makes sense. It's got a lot of resistance. It would need more consolidation, better news, etc., etc. For this to keep ripping, in my opinion. Now, a fun stock that I'm watching for the next few days here is LCFY. In fact, I actually just took a small position for a swing on this one. Not much news um, other than an unaudited uh, financial, unaudited revenue, uh, uh, whatever. Um, they, they claim that their, their uh, revenue is almost double. Uh, so this is a very speculative play. That's why I have very small size on it. But what I like about it is it's just that, it's that pattern right now, right? You had not an IPO dump, 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 dump. And now you're getting some, what looks to be someone loading here. So uh, I'll just be risking 40 cents on it. I'm looking for a swing on this one. It's very small size. So like I would be looking for like anywhere from $1.50 to two bucks into this area of resistance here. Um, relatively low float. It's just things are bouncing right now and I'm just trying to play what works. So we'll see if it ends, anything ends up coming out of it. Like I said, I'm personally just risking this 40 cent level, so relatively wide risk, looking for that daily chart risk. I mean, I could go as low as to risk 20 cents, but I'm not an animal. I'm not a full on animal. Um, I see another one, uh, Tide was another mover today. I forgot to bring that one up. Whoop. Cryptide. Whoop, whoop. Let's see it. So Tide, we had a really gnarly, nice, I keep saying gnarly. We had a really nice move, um, just a rip out of nowhere, no news. Big pump and dump uh, from 90 cents up to $1.80, another 100% mover just to fade off. The problem here, there really wasn't an entry on this one. I mean, it had no real reason, right? I mean, nothing nothing too crazy here, no news. IPO pump and dump, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but there, there is nothing to me signal, signaling like, oh, this is a great watch. Um, you didn't, we didn't have that, let me turn this off. You just had a double bottom. I mean, it didn't have that exhaustion low or anything like I looked for on Redbox. It, nothing, nothing crazy. You know, just, yeah, <laughs> nothing wild there. But it was a, a lot of, that's kind of what a lot of today's movers I feel like we're all about. Um, going into close, I'll show you, because we got two minutes left. I'll show you my thought process going, going into close. So my top percent gain sh uh, scans show a lot of stocks that have very little volume on it. So then I go through and look like, okay, what do we have? We've got... Uh, ETCG up like, oh, that's an OTC. I like to look at it though. Let's see. Nothing. Nope. I don't care about that. And then I go through LCFY. That's where that came up. Uh, then there's QTech, which I kind of liked. QTech. Not enough to take a position on it or anything, but it, it, it already missed the move there. Um, you had that really nice, again, no, no news, but it had that uh, midday pump. We just held up all day, and then we got that rip from you know like a dollar twenty-five to a dollar fifty-five. This one's interesting though. Same thing, low volume for now, but this is one that was a spac and uh, is now bouncing. Um, so this is one I'm going to keep an eye on for the next few days as well. Never really has had a lot of volume, and it's a low float stock. Woohoo! I love to see it. Love to see it. We've got a minute left before market closes here. So the, the ones I'm watching for going in the next few days, I'll be watching uh, I'll fly a little bit. But at this point, it's going to need a lot more time to reset up. HKD, 
be keeping a very close eye on this in the next few days to see if we can trap some more short sellers. Um, uh, EVTL, we'll see if that failed follow through maintains or if we get a trap and then a re-push through nine, also very possible. LCFY keeping an eye on, but I am swinging it, so it's small size there. Tide could have a day two tomorrow. Um, the only issue with Tide in my eyes is that it's not holding its gains well. Uh, yeah, this is this is a day two candidate actually. The more I look at this, it's holding gains enough. Uh, Tide could very well have a really nice day two move tomorrow, especially if we open up over today's close. If we can open up at like 130 to 140, I think this is a great watch. What I'd watch for here is some midday consolidation and then or a morning consolidation then for a midday push. That's what I'm gonna be looking for on something like Tide for a day two. For a potential push up, I mean, realistically, you know, anywhere between two and three bucks could even break out before failing. That would be a best case scenario in my eyes, but those are what I'm looking for, guys. My camera is dead, so unfortunately, I cannot turn it back on. Actually, maybe I can. Let's try, let's try, let's see what we can do. Oh, darkness, 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 EOS webcam utility. And he's back. He's back, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your top watches are going into tomorrow. Make sure you smash the like button so hard that the like button starts to cry itself to sleep at night. I know it's abuse, but we're allowed to abuse the like button. Turn on your post notifications. Click the subscribe button, and I'll see y'all back here on Friday for a small cap recap. A big boost of energy coming through. Let's go! Bye, everyone. We hope you guys enjoyed that last video. Thanks so much for watching and being a part of the Stocks Trade community. We wouldn't be here without you guys. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but we can't do it without your help. So if you enjoy what we're putting out and want to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.